Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Welcome back to another eventful episode of Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez. You know, last week we saw the release of Masters of the Universe Revelations. And there are a lot of people who are really butthurt about this show. But I'm not one of them. You see, I've been a fan of Masters of the Universe since I was a little kid. I had He-Man way before I had Transformers. And I had a lot of He-Man. I had Castle Grayskull. I had Snake Mountain. I had a ton of vehicles, a ton of figures. When I moved from New Jersey to South America, I had to give them all up. South America, I bought another Castle Grayskull, another He-Man. Fast forward to 2000X, and we get a new He-Man show. It was revolutionary. It was amazing. Was it He-Man from, from our childhood? No. No, it wasn't. Were people butt hurt? No, they weren't. Because it was updated, it was a new interpretation, it was akin to Transformers Animated reinterpreting the entire G1 Transformers mythos and bringing it into a new generation. That's what the 2000X He-Man series did. Now, I was never into New Adventure. Uh, I just, I had this thing called Nintendo then, and I, it was like a two-month period where I wasn't into toys. And that's the, that's the little pocket window that New Adventures existed in. But Masters of the Universe 2000X series was great. I loved it. You know what bothered me was that I couldn't find all the figures. Because every wave was He-Man and Skeletor, and then they'd put one repaint or, or one guy in the case. And it's like, well, it's impossible to find. And then the last guys come out as like statues, and they were impossible to find. All those Snake Man variants. But I still have all my 2000X figures. I don't have them all. And I'm like four figures away, five figures away from completing a, a G1 He-Man collection. You know, all the Italian figures and the Sorceress. Now we move on to Super 7. Now they have the, the retro uh, Star Wars Kenner-like figures. They're cool. You know, they're, there's a lot of product out there. So those, those I pass on, they're cool. I like them. There's just, I'm a little specific when it comes to Master of the Universe, how I collect them. Then we get to Super 7. Well, Maddie Collector, and, and then it evolves into Super 7. And then uh, we get these. We get these fully posable six inch action figures from Maddie Collector Super 7. They're amazing. Absolutely amazing. They're, uh, they're what we needed. They're what guys my age really needed. These weren't available in stores. These you had to get you know online, subscribe to the, to the club to get them. So the, these were amazing because they brought back everything that I remember as a kid and they updated the way Chug Classics was an update for G1. The way the way Studio Series is an update for... I mean, look at this. This is a great jazz. It's a great jazz. It's not G1 jazz, which is great in its own way. It's dated, though. Doesn't mean it's not good. It's just dated. We have jazz here. Fully posable. Transforms. Looks just like he did in the television series. It's great. Super 7 comes along. Hey, here's an extra head. Uh, you know, here's extra weapons. Here's a here's a booster pack with weapons. 
to make it look like uh, he had the weapons in the show or in the, in the movie, whatever. So, uh, hang on, my secretary needs me. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate that. Uh, so, then we go on. I mean, there's there's countless reissues. Of, you know, there's, there's Star Wars, Transformers, uh, He-Man reissues. Okay, every, every line that's important has reissues. All right. We get to these guys now. These are the vintage looking figures with updates. Now, okay, sure, I'm gonna collect them. I'm not opening them. I have this one open because uh, I wanted to troop build those sky sleds. So I've, I've got, a, I got a lot of Prince Adams hanging around. I wish we could all dress like Prince Adam. We'd all, uh, we'd all be a lot happier. <laughs> uh, so, Masters of the Universe Revelations. My assistant Casey is here. Masters of the Universe Revelations. Now, what are some of the complaints? The show didn't focus on He-Man and Skeletor. They were in, I mean, He-Man was in every episode. But let me ask you something. Does Transformers or Star Wars need to focus on Optimus Prime and Bumblebee to be good? Is Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, are they in Last Stand of the Wreckers? Is Luke Skywalker in Rogue One? You can make an argument that he's not even in the sequel trilogy. Darth Vader is not in the sequel trilogy. You can say that the Megatron we saw in the live-action Michael Bay films wasn't Megatron. It's Megatron in name only. Mino. It doesn't mean those interpretations aren't good. Just because they changed the focus... The line isn't called He-Man. It's Masters of the Universe. He-Man is a top-tier character. He's a tier A character. But he doesn't always have to be the focus. I think it was brilliant to allow the focus to fall on other characters to tell the story, the unconditional way of telling the story of the hero's journey. Now, yes, I think Revelations is telling the hero's journey of Tila, but the bigger picture, she's also telling it for... Prince Adam. Tila's journey. She's about to become promoted to man-at-arms, woman-at-arms. A crisis happens. She loses faith in herself. She loses faith in, in the world around her. She departs. She becomes nomad. Nomad comes back. Finds an ally. Finds a powerful tool. Tila gets uh, Evil Lynn. She gets Orko. Uh, they discover a little bit of magic. Hero's journey concludes with the power sword coming back. The, the hero now has their weapon and can conquer evil. But then it's snatched away at the last second by Skeletor. And Prince Adam's dead. Brilliant take. Absolutely brilliant take. Brilliant take. The story of He-Man doesn't need to focus on He-Man. How is He-Man seen through the other characters? I like how Tila sees He-Man. She sees someone who was great to the outside world, but lied to her, wasn't honest with her. And sometimes it makes me think of a parent who's loved by the community, but at home, that parent is different to their child. And the way that child sees that parent is not the way the community saw that parent. And that's what goes through my mind when I saw that story. And I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved that Tila was the focus and they were building a team around her and that team fractured And we don't know what's going to happen now. 
you know He-Man's not going to stay dead, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, spoilers. Yeah, Prince Adam gets stabbed through the heart, whatever it is. He died in, in the cliffhanger episode. It's He-Man. It's comic book law. The hero comes back. We know that. That's part of the new journey. The new hero's journey. Die, come back. Happens to everybody. Optimus Prime dies. He comes back. Luke Skywalker dies. He comes back. It's the new hero's journey. So why are you upset? Why are you mad that another master of the universe is the focus? Enjoy the fact that someone cared enough about this brand to put this much effort into the animation, the casting, the direction of the show, the writing of the show, and the thought process of where the show can go to. Appreciate the fact that someone cares so much about a brand that has really not done shit in the last 30 years. Oh, you could say, yeah, you know, oh, we had 2000X, we had the reissues, we, we had the microfigures, we got the mega block. Here's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Here's Star Wars and Transformers! Understand your place, Masters of the Universe fans. Be happy that you got something. I'm happy as a Masters Universe fan that I got something. I wanted something. I wanted I wanted to spend more money on something. Be happy. You got something to spend money on. I'm happy. I'm happy with the show. I got new toys. And that's what we're going to do today. I got new toys. I got new He-Man figures. Now, there's probably like 50, 50 or so He-Man figures I have yet to open from Super 7 and Maddie Collector. That, that's another issue I have to deal with separately in my life. But we got some new He-Man figures. I'm happy these exist. I'm happy they look like the show. I'm not crazy about the character selection necessarily, especially with Wave 2. Uh, we're getting a, a Spike Or. G give me that Triclops, you know. G give me Tila's new friend, uh, Adara, Adara. I, I, sounds like Adora, it's not. Give me that character. Um, so, Masters of the Universe Revelations. I couldn't be happier with the show. I hope I'm as happy with the toys as I am with the show. I'm back in the basement from Hawaii. I got good old trusty yellow. Let's open yellow up. Oh, by the way, Alan Oppenheimer coming back as Mossman. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Woo! Uh, interesting choice with Mossman being in the first wave. I, I I guess I guess he's gonna be, you know, maybe with a new head a, a Beastman repaint. But, you know, Beastman versus Mossman screen time in the show. I'm I'm just throwing it out. You need balance, so two good guys, two bad guys. I you know, I get it, but I I don't know. I I, I might have done He Man Tila Skeletor Beastman. I, I don't know. You know, Tila is, you know, a main character of the show. All right, here we go. Uh, you guys know me. I like to buy two of each. That's the tr that's the unwritten rule of Transformers. One to keep sealed, one to open. If there's a variant, obtain variant. One sealed, one variant open. The unwritten rule. I don't have that rule with any other line. With uh, these guys, the retro figures, buy one, hang it up. I love it. Looks cool. Yeah. Don't need to open them. Why? I got the originals. They're good enough for me. They're, they're, they're yeah. I mean, yeah, they're fine. These, I'm going to open these guys up. Uh, Packaging is not as exciting as 
vintage He-Man, but you know what? Packaging changes for a brand over, over all the time. L look at G1 packaging, look at Transformers packaging now. C completely different. I'm not crazy about the packaging now on Transformers. I haven't been crazy about Transformers packaging since Armada. Love me some G2 packaging. All right, so we've cut this guy open. Gonna pull him out. Uh, you know, I'm just noticing this now. It's got it's got the rock formation here at the bottom. That's traditional with He-Man. It's got runes up top. I think maybe blue might have been the wrong choice. Red, I mean, you could say, yeah, red, He-Man, red, and black, and maybe go with green for Grayskull. That would have been my impression. It, it's a minor critique. Again, if, if I were someone who said, hey, I got to display this in the box, and I want to look at that box every time I walk past this, this section of my collection room, I'm, I'm just making an observation. That's all. That's all I'm doing. I like the insert. It's Rocky Formation. Cut it open. Use it as a play piece for your for your toys. You know, um, not crazy about the packaging on Transformers, but I, you know, the difference between this and this, this goes in the recycling bin. This I can cut up and use as a display piece. So we've got our figures that taped down. It's not easy open. Let's uh, sample the bouquet. All right, I'm getting a uh, polyurethane number five. Mm, the paint is a brown 12. That's a orange six with a little bit of uh, yellow mixed in. And the yellow is too faint, I can't tell what it is. All right, let's uh, take out the figure first. No extra head. All right, I would have, I would have appreciated extra heads instead of extra hands, but we got a pair of extra hands for our grips, for holding weapons. We got a fist, we got a hand for high fiving people. Yeah. Uh, I like that the H is based off the battle damage armor chest. That's fine. Posability, very nice. P plastic stiff. Plastic's very stiff. I'm, I'm sure these will, in a standing contest, I think these guys are going to beat Fangry every day and night. Very standard. Posability. Great. Great. Absolutely amazing. Compared to the old Super 7 guys, it's on par. It checks out. It checks out. It's on par. Let's uh, take out a hand, see how easy it is. Pops right out. Let's uh, replace said hand with open hand for a holding sword. Yep, this head pop off easily. Standard head joint. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the face sculpt on this, but it is the first figure in a new line. Then again, it is your best-selling character so not crazy about that head sculpt let's check out the sword the most important accessory of any he-man figure he's got no axe but he's got a shield okay sword power sword very nice looking power sword beautiful power sword i love it oh hand came off Does the sword fit in the back? Oh, it fits in the back. That's important. That's important. Sword fits on the back? Yes, that's important. How does the shield fit? Does the shield fit in the back? Nah, not so good. Nah, not so good. If I fuss around with it, it might fit a little better. By the power of Grayskull, Thundercats, ho! All right, I'm liking, 
I'm liking the way the shield fits. I'm liking the sword. It's a little, it's got a little bend to it. I'm not crazy about that head sculpt. Do not dig it. All right, He-Man. I want to check out Battle Cat. Battle Meow. If I were in charge of the Motu line, there is a character I would create. And that character would be called Battle Moose. You can ride into battle on Battle Cat, but wouldn't you feel a lot cooler riding into battle on a giant Battle Moose? Those big, huge antlers. Battle Moose. Mattel, that one's free. All right, so great weight to it. Absolutely great weight. Fine paint details on the mask. He's got the eyes painted on. Let me let me take him out. He's got the eyes painted on there, which is great. Very important. I don't think you guys need to worry about me cutting the little plastic tabs and not seeing it right. I mean. Uh, see, I made the mistake of cutting towards myself. Never cut towards yourself. Always cut away from yourself towards your enemies. Ooh. Gotta say, I love the posability of this. I, I think this is even better than the posability of the uh, Classics uh, series from Matty Collector uh, Super 7. Ooh. Like it. Like it a lot. Look at that face. I want to say I like it. I mean, it looks like Cringer. Doesn't look like Battle Cat. Then again, we never saw Battle Cat in the show without the mask. I feel like he needs more of a beard. You know, like like one of these down here. But the color is great. I love that he's not as dark as the Classics version. He's got a hinged jaw. Beautiful. Let's uh, let's position our our He-Man a little better. Hmm. Mm. Mm. -mm. Not, not digging what's what's happening right now. Um. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. That's no bueno. Off to an um, interesting start. There's potential here, but the execution leaves something to be desired. Been watching a lot of that Gordon Ramsay Kitchen Nightmares. Man. That lady, Amy, is crazy. Ooh. I wonder if I mess around with him more, if he'll stay a little better. No. His legs are very far apart. For being on Battle Cat. Because he's now he's like striding him. I don't. Then he. I, I think this is going to work better if he's standing next to Battle Cat rather than riding on Battle Cat. Yeah. Uh, Battle Cat's great. I mean, I, lo I love the part. I, lo I love this. It's painted, it's soft rubber, it allows for some flexibility. Great detailing on the paws. Great articulation on the figure. It's it's just the the proportions are a bit off, or the articulations a bit off, and getting him to sit tightly on the figure. But you know what? 
you know what? That show was so good, it makes up for it makes up for the show for for the the lack of um, finesse in the toys. And again, these are only the first figures of the line. With the first figures, there's always a little uh, futzing around that needs to be done. I guarantee this guy comes out again, maybe slightly different color, uh, better head sculpt. I don't know. There's there's time to change it. I mean, but you know, there there's some who will argue oh, it doesn't need to be changed. And if he doesn't get changed, it, it's fine. It's fine. This is a good toy for kids. It's fine. It works. It works for kids. I wish he sat better on Battle Cat. But this is a great Battle Cat. I, I dare say, this may be my favorite Battle Cat. It, it would be perfect if he would sit properly on it. And maybe a little more, you know, whiskers. Head sculpt's great. It's got... It's a little too cringery for me, but we're hiding it under this. So, we're okay. Hey, be nice to yourself, be nice to others, wash your hands, wear a mask, be smart, get vaccinated. Hey, you remember that time you got polio? No, because you got vaccinated. Don't be a dick. Get the shot. All right. We'll see you eventually on Cut the Tape. My name is Rick Alvarez. Check out the entire TFYLP network. There's the main show on Mondays. There's book club, microcasters, and other things. Other things happen. And I wish I had a list to have plugged them appropriately. Hey! Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, and remember, it's never too late to cut the tape.